It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the one and only Kestrel Super. One of the last remaining British heavyweight lager producing companies to produce a beer at 9% ABV. I understand there's an 8% variant now, but we have a, a 9% one here. Um, back uh, about four or five years ago, the government introduced a high alcohol beer tax alcohol tax that came in over 7.5 percent abv so a lot of the brewers out there we're looking at you tenant super decided to go from nine percent down to 7.5 percent abv but kestrel stayed strong they say they stayed strong and they kept it at nine percent abv i think if you're going to produce a strong lager for a certain individual then just keep it as it was just keep it at nine percent abv let's get it out into a glass see what we get it's brewed in bedford in england now i know the only brewery in bedford in england big enough to brew great big batches of this beer would be the old wells and young's brewery that's now owned by marston's I think it's contract brewed. It's owned by the Brookfield family, I believe it says. And it's won an award in 2015, a gold award at Monday Selection. Uh, whoever they are. I mean, I've been judging beer for, for lots and lots of different institutions all around Europe. And I've never really heard of the Monday Selection. Maybe it's the cheap strong lacquer um, type awards that they give out <sighs> I don't know I think it was originally a Scottish lager it was originally a Scottish company um, beer in the glass we got a one to two finger white head um, great carbonation rolling up the glass but my glass does, uh, does does have a widget you can see there's a widget there so it's making the beer look um, a little bit more carbonated than it probably once was. It's a kind of a, a honey, clear, amber coloured beer. Let's get the aroma on this one. Yeah, and there's a pattern here. There's a pattern here. I've done a few of these strong lagers, reviewed them today. We started off with um, Okashim, 7%. Then we moved over to a Halne at 7%, two strong Polish lagers. Then we moved over to a Tenant Super at 7%, 7.5% ABV. And now we're on, yes, the award-winning Kestrel Super, but they all have this underlying theme of same aroma, same flavor. It's, it's a brewing syrup that they're using. They're using, and I've come to the conclusion after reviewing Four of this is the fourth strong beer in a row um, but I've come to the conclusion that, that they're using some kind of brewing syrup here they're all there's, there's a recipe that was produced by somebody that's been let out probably special brew probably Carlsberg special brew an old brewer who worked there probably moved on took the recipe or knew the recipe in his head sold the recipe to to, to Van Per, who, who makes these Polish beers, or then Kestrel, then Tenants. And then, of course, once the recipe's out, the recipe's out. It's all out there. They can tweak it a little bit. Um, you can add a little bit more sugar to get it to 9%, like Kestrel have. But generally, they've all got that let's hide the alcohol as best we can and let's chill this down to a freezing cold temperature and the beer might taste okay. Let's get, yeah, the aroma. So it's a... Uh, A sweet kind of dry almost slightly German Bock aroma but the German box will have 100% malt these beers will have maybe more corn maybe more sugar brewing syrups let's dive in cheers Oh, 
Boah. I think there's a certain balance. You're up there now, 9% ABV. You're not buying this beer if you're a beer connoisseur. You're not buying this beer if you like to get fantastic fragrance aromas from the beer, fantastic taste of malt and hops and wheats and biscuit malts and, and you know, your grapefruit flavors from beers, which we normally love to do on this channel. Um, this is a beer brewed specifically to get it at, at, at a nice high alcohol by volume for the certain person who wants to buy this beer. Um, they want to make it so you can drink it very quickly. They've hidden the alcohol and it's it's just it's just not very good. It's just not very good. Extremely sweet, an extremely sweet, slightly grainy, slightly mazy, very dry. It leaves a horrible kind of aftertaste on the palate. Next to no hops, next to no hops, there's not really a great bitterness coming through from this beer, which, you know, if this was a double IPA, it, it, it would. I like the fact though, I like the fact that, the, yeah, I mean, this, this brewery knows, they know that they have a reputation for, bridge, for producing Kestrel Super. They know that there's a certain person who's going to go out and buy it. They're not going out and hiding. I like the fact, I mean, Tenants, Tenants Super used to be 9%. These used to be the big boys in the, in the Strong Lager industry in the UK or the, or the market these two used to be the big boys whereas Tenant Super went oh we better not brew it at 9% ABV anymore we'll take it down to 7.5% ABV and we'll put a big badge on the front saying please drink responsibly I've never heard anything so ridiculous in all my life it's absolutely patronizing at least at least Kestrel Super's gone you know what we haven't got a very good reputation um, this is going to be the certain type of person who's going to buy this beer and drink this beer. And I, and that's it. They know their market and they're not shy about it. That's what I'm trying to say. They know their market. They know who they're selling this to and they're not shy about it. Where tenants went all shy and tried to save their reputation a little bit. But it's already, I mean, you think of tenants super and immediately... You know, these thoughts creep into your mind as the, the type of person who might be drinking this strong lager. And again, I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm not here to judge anyone. Um, but I live in a bit of a deprived area. I mentioned this in the Tenant Super Review. Um, I'll go over it in a little bit more detail now because I wanted to keep this for the Castrol Super Review. But I've known people who I used to play pool with in um, the Royal Hotel up, up the road there. And... and now it's a Tesco, and these people who were really decent people, salt of the earth, few pints of Carlin, Worthington Cream Flow, you know, that was the type of beer that was sold in the pub, I'm talking 20, 20 odd years ago now, um, few games of pool, great people, I, I see these same people now in my local shop, um, when I go and buy a loaf of bread or some cheese or some milk or something, and and they're really, they don't even recognise you anymore. They don't recognise you anymore. They're abusive. They, they've got terrible language. They're bumping into people. They're knocking things off the shelves. They've generally got no concern for anybody else around them. And I firmly believe, I firmly believe that these types of beers change people. I think they change people's minds, they change their brains, it, it alters their brain in some way. If you're drinking this at, at big capacities over a long period of time, I generally think you can see it in their face, the big puffy cheeks and the big red nose and the anger, the, 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 you know, they, they've got grief and anger all over their face, they're ready to punch you in the face at any one moment. And again, 
These were the same people who, 20 years ago, when the pub was open up the road, you'd be playing pool with them, drinking carling, and you wonder, you wonder what happened for them to go down this path. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to, I'm just giving it how it is. I'm giving it how it is. Um, I'm going to rate Castrol Super. I think it's ruined a lot of people's lives, this, this type of um, strong lag. I really do. Um, so on that basis, it tastes terrible. It tastes terrible. That's a 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.